Are you new to publishing books? Well, hey, welcome to this awesome industry. And uh, we want to give you about four facts. They're going to start you out the right way going into the new year. So you want to learn more and stick around. Welcome to Self Publishing with Dale and Kelly. We're on a very special Tuesday live stream. So those of you that are just joining us or watching us on the replay, we appreciate you joining us. If you want to learn a little bit more about tips and strategies for publishing your own books, make sure that you subscribe and turn your notifications on so you get all the latest videos and exclusive live streams such as this. Uh, boy, we missed out this past Thursday. What happened? We were sick. And I apologize in advance for any coughiness. I'll try my best not to cough into the mic. Yeah, so here's the deal. My energy level is going to be way less today. And I think her voice is going to probably be mousier than usual. Uh, I did get a comment from one of the viewers more recently. And we appreciate uh, the comments and some of the suggestions. Someone had suggested uh, getting Kelly a mic. And yes, we'll eventually get her a lavalier microphone. But for right now... I just got to be honest with you, uh, YouTube doesn't pay the bills here, folks. So um, that is one of the nice features where Super Chat, hey, you know what? You could probably just donate a little bit of money over towards the cause. So if you want to see a lavalier microphone here on Kelly, we'll go ahead and put it on here. If for right now, we're just going to have to keep it bootstrapped. And we've got the Rode microphone right in front of her instead of in front of my big loud mouth. Uh, so um, I see Dale Ferdinand's in the house. What's shaking, buddy? I've uh, been talking with Dale a little bit. Um, any rate, uh, we got to get a little bit of the stuff out of the way. Today's live stream is brought to you in part by Grammarly. That's the world's greatest grammar checker and plagiarism detector. It's one of my preferred tools. If you'd like to get yourself a free or premium account, you just head on over to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash Grammarly and grab yourself an account. Uh, I actually had uh, one of my... Longtime viewers uh, said he just picked up a annual membership for what was it less than 40 40 percent off they had like a Christmas deal I guess so they always have good deals yeah you may want to go over and check take a look at that um, I think when I picked it up I got it almost at the same rate it was like 70 bucks for the entire year it is really worth it a lot of people are kind of like oh it's just a smelling tracker no 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 you don't understand it does much more than that and especially depending on the context of your specific work, you can actually change how it works. And uh, hopefully on a very future uh, video, in a very near future, I will show you some of those things and give you a little bit of a ride along and see why I like it so much. So go ahead and get yourself a free account or premium account over at selfpublishingwithdale.com slash Grammarly. So um, this Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're back in the saddle even though we're not 100 percent today i'm sure that come thursday we're going to be a little bit better but we're going to be showing you how to find those profitable niches in fact we'll probably have a screen share such as this but we're going to get behind the seat so this is going to be something that's going to be a first for a long time we're going to get in to the browser and you're gonna to get to see exactly how we find those profitable niches. So if you want to take a look at that, make sure that you should show up this Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that'll be Thursdays here on out until I otherwise say, we're gonna be joining here every Thursday for this, the uh, live stream. So today is just a, a rare occasion. All right, so uh, talking to chat here, what is going on, Katrina? How's it going? It's Jacuti Pie. Yeah, it's good to see you in the house. Yeah, it's it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. What well, gosh, I mean, we had streamed what the before we went on vacation. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Two weeks ago yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it was it was real rough because we were heading out to Phoenix and uh, to visit some family. And so it's not like we're going to be like, hey, we're going on vacation. Please, thieves and robbers, break into our house while we're gone. Although we have our cat sitter, so got to watch out for her. And trust me, she's nothing to uh, shrug at. Uh, but uh, we at least have our house looked after. And we had, we had a good, good trip. But unfortunately, we came back and immediately it was just downhill. Oh. 
It took you a day, but the day of the flight home, I started feeling awful. Yeah. Awful enough to upgrade to better seats so I didn't have to talk to anyone, so I could just chill and have as much leg room as possible. Yeah, it was, it was I, a good I trip. didn't care how much it costed. Well, within reason. Well, yeah, within within reason. Well, let's, let's uh, before we jump into the four facts that every newbie self-publisher should know, and uh, rest assured, those of you veteran self-publishers should definitely pay attention because I got to tell you, these four things, we don't just see newbies doing this. We see people that are experienced doing it on a regular basis. And uh, we can we can throw a couple of our friends under the bus here on this one, but we're not going to name any names here. So make sure you stick around for that. Let's talk about quarter four sales. Oh. We are now finishing up into our last five days of quarter four the magical season why has it been so magical what's what's the deal with quarter four people love giving in december it started for me probably mid-october november was higher than normal and then yeah. december was just bam i think january is still going to be pretty good because of gift cards yeah um it, it almost yeah. always is. And I think uh, actually a, a good mutual friend of ours, Carla Marie, had even uh, mentioned that within her, her private group, how uh, she said, you know, hey, don't don't take away from the fact that there's still going to be sales coming in going into January. And this is even more so true for me as a fitness author. I always see a spike in sales in January. Uh, I get a lot of sales in my fitness books, more than any of them. Yeah, Q4 did me quite well. It's still, I'm still hoping for more sales the last rest of the month. You know, I thought I was going to lower my goal for December. Yeah. But I decided to keep it, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, it's it's far and away exceeded, and that's that's really something. Um, so those of you that aren't in the know, quarter four every year is broken up into four segments. Okay between three months and quarter four represents the last three months of the year and of course we all know it's the holidays and people are a little bit more willing to part ways with their hard-earned money to get gifts for their family and I tell you it, it really it rewards the Roberts household and this is our our, our second real planned quarter four every for, other for quarter publishing. four before that yeah every yeah every year before that we kind of just took it for granted so those of you that are new to self-publishing that might have just gotten in and you're like, I don't understand what the big deal is. I didn't get many sales. Hang in there. Start planning now for quarter four of 2018. Because that's Absolutely. what I did in 2016. All of 2017, I was like, Q4, Q4, Q4. I can't wait for it. I can't wait yep. for it. Yeah. Yeah. You really, if you can start to plan your business around that Q4, and we'll probably have future tutorials that we can kind of talk about what our mindset was, first of all, because you got to have a good mindset going into this. And um, you have to have a willingness to work your tail off during this time. And that might be why both of us kind of got sick was the travel and really we... I don't know what, but if I had to do it all over again and get the same sales in December, but knew I was going to get sick, I'd be fine. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll get sick again. Yeah, no, no complaints. And considering I got to binge watch uh, The Punisher for uh, a whole week there. Are we dropping numbers or should we save that for a future broadcast? Well, we'll save that for a future broadcast. We'd definitely love to hear how you guys did in quarter four. Uh, was it as good to you as it was to us? Um, uh, is there any kind of questions that you might have that um, you need us to kind of ex expand on? Um, as per usual, if you'd like to get a hold of either one of us, you can always get a hold of us at dale at selfpublishingwithdale.com. That's the email. And uh, if for some reason you had a question for Kelly, all you got to do is just say, hey, this is for Kelly. There's been a couple times people have sent me some messages. So I guess yeah. she's becoming a regular fixture here just, on Thursdays. Just filter him through him and he'll let me know if I need to answer something. Yeah. Yeah, typically because uh, she gets all excited. So trust me, if you send an email... I get it over to her because she's like literally sitting right next to me here. Uh, as you can see, I've <coughs> upgraded the fine facilities here yet again. Um, there's going to be some tweaks here in the live streams as time goes on. Please just hang in there with us. Um, for some reason, the live events on YouTube kind of went 
and I had to create all these things all over again. But rest assured, you show up on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're going to be able to get a new episode. And once again, this week, we're going to be talking about how to find profitable niches. Let's go ahead and jump into what we're going to talk about today. And that is the four facts every newbie self-publisher should know. And very soon when we're talking about points like this, I'll have that put up here on the video here so everybody can be able to see over our shoulders what we're talking about. So I want number one. You want number one. So yeah. this is in no order of importance. Uh, my wife, Kelly, here is going to take number and one. Some of these might, you think, contradict each other, but just stay with us. You'll, yeah. you'll learn something. Number one, don't outsource what you can't afford. Yeah, the whole big thing, outsource so you can you know, grow your business faster. Mm -hmm. However, if you don't have that money to outsource, you shouldn't be outsourcing. S quick story time. I actually got a credit card, $10,000, Capital One. No, I didn't max it out for the Kindle business. <laughs> However, when I first started, I remember putting a few books on that card and I didn't make enough money right away to pay it off. So therefore, we just finally paid off that credit card. Woo hoo! But um, just don't get on a credit card. Either grow your business slower or get a part-time job if you really want to put stuff out. But don't charge stuff for this business because it's Amazon and you just never know what their future holds. This is so true. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that will probably argue with us on this one, but the the game has changed here folks and what used to work a couple of years ago doesn't work so much now there was so many people that were wanting to just go for broke oh i'm gonna hire this i'm gonna hire that i'm gonna hire this i'm gonna hire that and you know that is all well and good if you can afford that expense and um as we kind of go forward you're going to see a lot of these things either a contradict themselves or b they kind of they go hand in hand and that's why we're going to go into number two it's number two is scaling too soon now the process of scaling is to grow something larger okay get it take one idea and just build upon it and there's been far too many times that i've seen this to where some people have had an idea and they go, oh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and develop an entire series on this. I'm gonna do 12 books on this. They go and they spend about $1,000 per book. They're $12,000 in debt. And guess what? It's a dud. Now, will it draw money over the long term? Sure, you know, but I mean, you need to have, first of all, proof of concept. And what does proof of concept mean? You gotta know something works. You gotta know it works. How do I know if something works, first of all? We'll probably touch base on this next week, but you can use Amazon to see if books in that niche are selling. Don't copy those books, but you can see if they're selling. Yeah, if if something is, you're, you're Sorry. killing my, yeah, you're killing the, <laughs> I apologize. Our our, our 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 lavish facilities here, folks. She just about knocked down the entire studio. No, just just kidding. Um, so that's the thing is, you could scale an idea. Let's go ahead and take this back a few years ago when I sat down, and this was when you and I had flown out to Chicago, and our buddy Jason Brock sat down with us, and he said, "Let me look in your account." And this is one of the beauties of having a coach, somebody who knows what they're doing and is been where you want to go so or is where you want to go at any rate and um, he looked into my account and he just scanned through the scores of just garbage books I mean I've got plenty of those folks just trust me on this one and one of those books just unfortunately well fortunately was doing better than most of them but I didn't see that because unfortunately I, I have all these books and they're all my prizes and they're all my babies and the thing was I didn't I didn't know where to go I didn't know how to scale things and he was able to point at something he goes that's working and I was like really and he's like yeah so what he did was he told me to scale it slowly to just start building upon that brand. And that's the fitness brand that I ended up building up to, to now. Um, the fitness brand that I haven't paid much attention to lately. 
Um, but I think I've shared with this with the, everybody at some point or another. So that's the idea of scaling. Don't scale too soon. Don't scale into something that you're just kind of, you know, throw money down the drain here. So that's where we talk about only spend what you can afford. Okay, that same thing goes towards scaling. You just don't want to be throwing money into something thinking, oh, this is going to work because it works for somebody else. That's all well and good, but I know for a fact that one of your best-selling books right now, you probably never would have guessed was going to be one of your best-selling books. Nope. And I never would have guessed my fitness books would have been doing so well. I have other books that I thought, oh, these are going to do really well. They didn't do worth a darn. So you're going to be very surprised that sometimes it's those least likely candidates that will come out and you'll end up scaling those. So don't scale too soon. Do it slow but sure, okay? You don't want to be going crazy on things and losing your tail in the process. You want number three? I do. Master one thing. Now just stay with me. I know y'all are excited to get this publishing business going. But when I say master one, don't do fitness books and then do fiction for book number two and then maybe do coconut oil for number three and then, you know, yada, yada, yada. Stick with one topic. And I say one topic because you can publish and say coconut oil and then do that in Kindle, Create Space, audiobook translations. That's still one thing. But the mind has, it's, there's so many books out right now that you need to focus on one thing and you're exponentially going to grow. Short story time too, I'm not trying to make it be all about me, but me and my um, accountability partner made a pact for one year, we would stick to one thing. Yeah. And as soon as we made that pact, my income grew exponentially. And most people are doing this for money. I mean, hopefully you like it, but you're doing it to pay the bills. So yeah. to pay the bills, you know, without being in debt, master one thing and you'll love yourself for it. Yeah, I, I really wish I could expand on this here, folks, but there's no other way to put it is really try to master that <laughs> one thing. Um, and um, here's something I see quite often. And if I can just, you know, I'm going to kind of lean on this point a little bit more is I see too many people that are just still chasing the Kindle publishing dream. Folks, listen, listen, you can look this up. The Association of American Publishers recently released, back in October, the actual statistics state that there was a 5% drop, that's two years in a row, a 5% drop in ebook sales. But here's, here's the incredible part is audiobook sales have increased 32%. That's an increase from the previous year that was at 25%. Audiobooks, you're going to go crazy or buck wild about anything. Do it over audiobooks. Sure, it's not the same amount, okay, as far as, you know, um, the millions to billions, if you will, that ebook is right now. But at that exponential growth, it's starting to tell me that the audience is voting with their pocketbook and they're starting to go, oh, we're kind of liking this and we're wanting more of this. So um, just remember this, that before you start jumping into your next Kindle publishing venture or your ebook publishing venture, you need to start to realize what Kelly just said was, you've got the ebook, okay, where's the paperback and the audiobook? I know some of you people are not able to do the audiobook. Maybe ACX isn't available. And maybe you don't have the discretionary expenses. But I promise you, if you just get out there and just do a little bit of research, you could probably be able to do your own audiobook. Uh, I know our boy William May did his own audiobook. He's done two of them already. He did it on his own. He's got no background in that. You know, he just had a will, he had a way, and he did it. So that is that is commendable to him, and I think that it also tells you that you can do that as well. So know that you need to get all three of those formats. Get those three formats before you move on, and she said translations, and of course you can spread out from there. So um, 
Before we do go any further, if you're enjoying some of this information, keep in mind that I am now starting to come around the bend and finishing up some of the editing and post-production process for the upcoming DIY publishing course. If you're interested in getting in the beta launch team at a 90% discount, you're gonna to wanna to head over to publishwithdale.com and put your email and your name. You'll be put on the list. I will be sending out an update here in the next couple of days to let you know further information all the facts about what's going to be included in the course and whatnot. So you're going to want to get your name and your email address on that, publishwithdale.com. If you happen to be watching this later on and you happen to go over there, sign up for that nonetheless, and you'll get some more information right there. So I'm not going to keep pushing that till, till the cows come home at this point, but I just really believe that it's going to be in your best interest in those you newbie self-publishers as well as the advanced veteran self-publishers get in sign up on that list right there and it is literally all it is going to be is a notification list i'm not going to be doing affiliate offers i'm not going to be sending you anything but information about the upcoming release of diy publishing and the coaching program so number four i got number four now you have number four but let's answer this question that we yeah. had about number three it's pertinent do you have a plan for your launches when you do the other languages? No, I don't. I don't either. I, I really wish you know, it's you, you, you're going to get nothing but transparency here uh, from us. And um, I'll have to say that I'm just a big rookie when it comes to uh, launching in other languages. I think that we've been very fortunate that we've been able to leverage the power of the niches that we're publishing in, as well as the keywords, doing keyword research. Because keyword research works pretty much the same thing, just in the different languages, but it gets a little bit more hairy because you gotta work with your translator in order to get the proper keywords because one keyword's not gonna be the same translation in another language or mean the same. Um, um, luckily, so. I mean, I don't know how much I've said it on here, but I don't mark it. I don't like it, so I don't do it. I. Um, I, I know that's pretty crazy, but I just don't like it. So I rely on keywords and stuff. So I either try to find my own, which I enjoy doing, or I'll talk to the translators. Yeah. Um, right now we're translating through Babelcube and I'm not here to knock them or anything, but um, if I'm gonna you know, learn to like marketing or decide to market one day, I'm gonna do it when I pay a translator out of my own pocket. And I, I'm not doing that with Babelcube. I don't know if the translators like that answer with Babelcube, but that's just how it is. I just realized uh, that our live chat, unfortunately, is not posting here. Folks, I, I, I do apologize for any kind of hiccups that we're having during the live chat. So, Yamaya, uh, happy holidays to you as well. Uh, Abby, if you want more information, you have to go ahead and get signed up for that. Um, I'll give you information here very, very soon, and it'll tell you about the exact launch date and everything else. Uh, so, all right, well, let's go into number four, trying to do it all. I know, it's like, we just completely contradicted number one. We did. So what gives? It was do, I, do I hire out or do I not try to do it all? You not try to do it all. You're either yeah. going to have, you know, you either spend time or you spend money. And you don't have to do, there's no land of the law saying that you have to do Create Space Kindle in an audiobook. If you don't have the money or the time to sit down and do a Create Space book, just don't do it. Just try to make that Kindle book the best yeah. book you can make it. <laughs> and um, see the profits from there. Someone I know um, in Canada, that's what she did. She just invested in one book tried to make that book as best as possible, took those profits, and, you know, made her next product. I think that was another Kindle book. Yeah. So, um, it's okay to let some things go, and I've learned that the past couple months. I, I don't touch ACFs yeah. at all. I don't touch, I don't do a lot of stuff I used to do, because, yeah. you know, it's a better result. You suggested that topic, so what do you think about that? So for me, trying to do it all, this, this, this is really, and I have to give a big shout out to my girl, uh, Ava Fails. Uh, she's been such a wonderful assistant. I picked her up this year and I have not regretted spending a single dime with her. 
and um, if you're able to get it to where you can find a professional that knows what they're doing, you don't have to spend time hand-holding them through every single process and they know exactly what you need to do and they can take that off of your plate, then that is an expense that's well worth it, but you gotta kind of break it down into bite-sized chunks. How can I afford it? That's gonna be the very first thing you need to do is how can I afford this to be taken off of my plate? Because I gotta tell you, I, I stink at putting websites together. I stink at managing them. I don't wanna bother with them. They're frustrating. So rather than me getting upset about it, I just go over to Ava or I go over to a qualified professional who handles websites and I hire them to do it. A great example of someone who budgeted and afforded it just properly is Riley Morrison. If any of you've watched that video, make sure you drop that inside the comments here. If you watch that video, he is my very first case study. I did this a few weeks ago, uh, released a interview with him, a young Australian author, and he talked about how it is breaking into the self-publishing industry. And man, it's just remarkable. And I've actually just had a conversation with him not too long ago. And he told me some of the hiccups he's had starting into the business, but he's also very realistic. And one of the things that he did that was realistic was he needed a good editor. And rather than spend thousands of dollars up front, what he did was every month, he just sent a little bit to his editor how much he could afford, the editor would go through, edit it, send it back, and then he was able to send more the very next month, and so on and so forth. So he's able to do it in bite-sized chunks. Think about how you can realistically be able to handle something and afford it, so then you're not doing it all. You know, you don't have to be a graphic designer, okay? You don't have to go over and do your book covers, so hire out. Try to find out some way that you can afford it. Go get a part-time job. Uh, heck, if you're a writer, do some freelance work. You know, just go out and ghost write a book for somebody. You know, make it happen. If you want something bad enough, you'll figure out a way to afford it without having to put yourself into debt and worry about making the next month's credit card payments. I also think it comes, and that just came to my head, of not getting overwhelmed. Yeah. Because you said about your website, who says you need a website? I mean, I don't so have true. one. You know, most people say get a mailing list. Who says you need one? It probably helps. But just starting off, just, you know, going back to number three, pick that one thing. And then number four, don't get overwhelmed. Just do that one thing. And over time, little by little, sorry. Sorry to burst your bubble. You're not going to make lots of money in just a month with this business. Yeah. I think I published my first book in April of 2015. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I just wanted to add that little tidbit. That's, that makes a lot of sense. So, um, what do you folks think? What are some facts that you would like to sell, uh, uh, share with a newbie self publisher? What is some advice that you would give yourself if you're a veteran self-publisher and you happen to be watching this, if you've been in this business for anything longer than a year or two, uh, I'd like to hear what your take is on this. What is some advice that you would give to a newbie self-publisher, someone breaking into this business that they can take going into this? Uh, these are our four best things that we like to lead with. Um, I know that there has been some times where I've had said there's seven mistakes that you know newbie self-publishers do. We've had that video before, but I thought today we'd probably hang about on these points. All right, so I um, want to make a reminder here as we wrap up today's live stream that um, really appreciate your patience as the holidays have you know kind of wrapped up and our, our illnesses are starting to uh, go away. Okay. Um, yeah, for now, I've had to kind of hold back a <laughs> cough or two here, and I know she has as well. Uh, this Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're going to want to join us for How to Find Profitable Niches. Make sure that you come with your um, notes. You're going to want to take a few notes as we're going through. We're going to do a little bit of screen share. We're going to show you behind the dash here how we're doing things. And uh, in the meantime, in the between time, um, this is, uh, if you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. And uh, if you enjoyed it that much too, make sure that you share it with somebody else who's into publishing too.
Till later. It's been self-publishing with Dale and Kelly. We'll see you soon.